In an epithelial sheet, the cells are connected to each other via cell junctions, and these cell junctions are of different types, like adherence junction, gap junction, tight junction, and each of these type of junctions has their own functions. But a combination of these junctions ensures that whenever we experience some kind of mechanical stress, the cell junctions and their coordination with cytoskeletal element prevents any kind of cellular distortion upon encountering mechanical stress. Otherwise, upon experiencing extreme stretch, our epithelia would rupture, but that doesn't happen thanks to these kind of cell junction elements and cytoskeletal proteins. So in this video, we are going to talk about one type of cell junction proteins and one type of cell junction components known as the tight junction. The epithelial cell is lying on the basal lamina and they are connected to each other via several kind of junctions and this uh, installment we are going to focus on the tight junction proteins. So let's look at what tight junction is. So the tight junctions are strategically localized more towards the apical side of the cell. Now if you consider any epithelial cells, they are pretty much polarized. That means they have an apical and a basolateral side. I mean you can simply think it in terms of the top of the cell or the bottom of the cell. I mean the bottom and the top are pretty much different from each other. But these tight junction components are ma mainly localized very near to the top surface or the apical surface I would say. And in the basolateral side you would find the adherence junction. But we are focused on the tight junction components today. Now let's see where does, I mean, which kind of role tight junction plays in terms of cellular physiology. Before that, if we look at, look at from the side view, the two cells are kind of like stitched to each other with the help of these tight junction. So tight junction pretty much works like a permeability barrier. Only selective molecules can pass through this barrier and small substance like even many solutes cannot pass and this selectively selectivity barrier is very important for cellular physiology not only that it works like a barrier for intermingling of ion channels or protein which are on on the membrane so ion channels are pro and proteins or carriers these are present on the plasma membrane and they are pretty much dynamic they are floating like a free island right or like a free iceberg in a sea but since these kind of barrier mechanisms are there, the apical proteins here in pink or blue cannot go towards the basolateral side and intermingle with the basolateral protein. So partitioning based on these kind of junctions are possible inside the cell and it has implication in terms of cell signal transduction and many other uh, physiological processes. Now let's look at our gut. Inside our gut, in the intestinal epithelia, you would see the epithelial cells are connected to each other by tight junctions. In the intestinal lumen, if you look at the cell types, they are pretty much interconnected by tight junctions. That ensures whatever the fluid is present in the intestinal lumen or along with the fluid there would be metabolites and toxic substances, anything cannot move through this ep epithelial bar barrier and move to the blood vessels or secrete their content in the blood vessel. So anything that has to get inside the intestinal epithelium or get absorbed in the intestine like many f uh, food material or many amino acids, glucose, etc. It has to pass through specific transporter. In this particular example, glucose had, has to pass through SGLT or sodium dependent glucose transporter. And tight junction ensures it cannot leak into the bloodstream but it has to pass through a transporter. And that is the importance. Another important such epithelia is present in the kidney, the renal tubules, right? The renal tubules has many of these tight junction proteins which ensures that not even ions can pass through these junction and leak out into the bloodstream. Now inside our brain, there are several, I mean inside our brain there are several neurons and glia and the brain is kind of encapsulated with blood vessels. Now these blood vessels supply oxygen to the brain, right? And these blood vessels ensures that only selective molecules can enter from blood to the brain. And brain needs some important molecules such as oxygen, glucose, etc. which can readily cross these barriers. But this particular blood-brain barrier 
which is present in the endothelial cell level or the junctions present in the endothelial cells of the blood vessels, they ensure toxic substances such as toxic metabolite, pathogens, etc. cannot enter the blood, uh, uh, cannot enter the brain. And they, they, are, they fail to cross the blood-brain barrier. And that is why blood-brain barrier is very important. Apart from blood-brain barrier, our brain is surrounded or brain is taking a bath inside the cerebrospinal fluid. And choroid plexus, which is lining the ventricular cavity, is the key source of the cerebrospinal fluid. Choroid plexus epithelial cells also, uh, also work like a filter or a molecular sieve, which ensures harmful substances from the blood cannot reach the CSF. Again, there is a barrier between the CSF and the blood, which is the blood CSF barrier. And the key component of the blood CSF barrier is the tight junction again. And this tight junction ensures anything that is present in the blood cannot enter the CSF. And many substances in the blood, like many toxic metabolites, are thereby not entering the brain via this route. Important substances like uh, like ions and etc. can pass through via carriers. Let's look at the components of the tight junction in the context of blood CSF barrier. It's just a con context, but overall, this kind of tight junction protein uh, molecular aspect is pretty much conserved throughout blood brain barrier, blood CSF barrier, or any kind of epithelial barrier we might talk about. So the key components are occludin and claudin. These two proteins, they are four, they are transmembrane proteins having four transmembrane region and loop regions outside, which are uh, intertwined to each other, just like a, they, they are stitching the membrane together. And there is important adapter proteins such as ZO1 and ZO2, which connects these claudin and occludin anchors to the cytoskeleton element, in this case actin. It ensures further stability and firmness. Also, there are junction associated molecules or jams, which helps the two epithelial cells to be close enough to each other such that molecules, small molecules, cannot even diffuse. Now, it has been shown in claudin mutant mice where claudine production is inhibited or claudine is eliminated, there is no tight junction in the epithelial barrier of the skin. As a result, there is immense amount of evaporation taking place from the skin and the pup dies in early age due to this. That means claudine or claudine present in the tight junction is super important for, for ensuring that fluid passage happens in a directed and a controlled fashion. In case of CSF, what we have seen Let's say the bicarbonate, the chloride, the sodium, potassium, etc. ion which need to be secreted into the CSF only can pass through specific transporters or specific carriers present in the, in the apical and the basolateral side of the choroid epithelia. Because there are tight junctions connecting these epithelial cells. So the blood borne substances cannot directly diffuse and enter the CSF, it has to go through a selectivity filter. And that is how tight junction components are very important for epithelia, especially those epithelia which works like a selectivity filter, such as in this video we have seen blood brain barrier and blood CSF barrier, and also the barrier in the renal tubules or in intestine. And that is how tight junction is so important in terms of cell physiology and the basic biology. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.